feeling today? Sweet girl, let's get in there. I am out dealing with our cow, Mia, who is our family milk cow, who's finishing up her breakfast in here, eating some alfalfa pellets and some grain. I think she's done. Let's get her out. I can't. Y'all done? Finish up. The pigs are in here getting her scraps and nestling in their hay because it is a cold morning. <laughs> they ransacked my milking stall last night and completely broke off the lock. Pigs are really not enjoyable right now for me. Let's go see if I can get the water going. It is a ice rink everywhere out here. Beautiful morning. Just a train going by. I'm gonna fill up this water. It is a frigid morning. It is cold. I think a little bit ago it was 17 degrees. I should have a bigger coat on, but when I'm working with Mia milking, it's too di it's too restrictive with a big winter coat to bring out here. So I just kind of eventually warm up. I'm pretty warm right now, but it is cold. Um, so this week we've been dealing with mastitis with Mia actually since last week let him out today too since last week we got okay I'm filming <laughs> can't make this crap up we're talking this real life <laughs> and we um, You are killing the people. You're killing me. Okay, so we are, last week we had our steer butchered, which was a new experience for us. We're gonna have to talk, my battery's dying. We gotta go inside and talk about this. It has been a couple days since that last clip. We had a lot, we had a lot going on this week and yet not so much. My kids got sick, so, and it, they never get sick at the rep, all at the same time. It's always like staggered, and that's what's been going on. This has something to do with the last conversation we were having, which is about my cow having mastitis. We had to do the walk of shame. That's right. We bought a gallon of store bought milk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We hung our heads down low and went and got this dang gallon of milk. And I have two things to report about it. Well, one, I thought for sure my family would, I mean, that my family would be all super pumped to have store-bought milk because we had this conversation with you, you know, about raw milk and about how it's been an adjustment for my family. And it actually, and I even thought it for myself and I had a glass of milk and I, didn't even finish it. It wasn't very good. So, palates change. If you're used to store-bought milk, that's what it's gonna be. I even thought my husband would be going hog wild over it too, and nope. That gallon of milk is lasting quite a long time. <laughs> so, I am sick of drinking that gallon, and I refuse to buy another one, Lord willing. I think I've got my cow on the other side of her mastitis, 
and it would never it was never bad I don't remember what I got in this clip but it was gross in the sense of it the milk was when we found out about what was going on with her mastitis and in every book in every article you read about having a family cow the one thing they say is it's not a if you will ever have to deal with mastitis it's a when you're gonna have to deal with it well I had a hunch this was gonna happen I just had this gut feeling we had our steer processed and did I not change the flipping battery <laughs> it's just, I did not <laughs> Round three of the same conversation. Okay, once we, we had our steer processed, was it last week? Yeah, it's been about a week since that happened. I had a hunch this was gonna happen. We had, this is our first time ever going through any of that. Um, we didn't do it ourselves. We hired a professional and uh, it was, it's, it's never my favorite thing. It's an emotional thing for me. And I think if, it ever becomes a time where I just think it's oh nothing else then that's a problem I always want to be able to have <laughs> something has to die for you to live whether it be plants animals whatever something has to die for you to live and as a meat eater I'm taking that responsibility and growing our own meat most of it but with that being said I had a hunch I was like we got we had that done that was a massive burden and a thing off my plate because we, he was eating the steer was eating us out of house and home um hay prices in Oregon with our drought that we're going through the feed prices are astronomical and when I went and did the inventory of how much hay we had left it was I was like holy crap it was stressing me out so in one sense it was a relief in the other sense it was something extremely hard to do moving on from that I had thought oh once we got that thing stressful off my plate something else would happen luckily I wasn't a ball of stress but the first milking after he was gone I go out and my oldest is helping me milk and he's like mom something weird is going on something gross is coming out of her her teat and I go up oh, yep it was mastitis so the whole time we she had mastitis she was never kicky she was never sensitive um, her udder was swollen it never even felt super hot compared to the other quarters of her udder and then she just was more than willing to let it go help it out so with animals I would like to go as in my own life as a human <laughs> no at, like with my animals I try and go as natural as I can as much as I can and does that make sense I I don't want to my first instinct I don't want to have to go to antibiotics right off the bat I want to try and see if I can nurse her even if it's more of a pain in my butt to do it even if it's more time on my part I'd rather see if I can work out the mastitis before giving her antibiotics I haven't had to give her antibiotics and Lord willing I don't have to but I have been milking her frequently several times a day and massaging her udder and getting it all out and last night and this morning she both on the California mastitis test she tested negative in that quarter I still feel like the udder feels different that part like it doesn't feel a hundred percent like the other parts but I don't know the moral of the story is I think we got her through the mastitis I think we're doing good and now I'm ready to get my milk back so now I need to go out and tonight I think is the night we are going to separate our calf Suki for the first time and she's going to think she died and went to hell <laughs> she's two three months old and this is the first time <laughs> she's spoiled she's so spoiled but she is suck drinking all my milk and I kind of really just need to see if she's drinking from that quarter and I can't tell if the quarter just has low production or if she's now drinking it I could tell one day it was definitely her because there was her slobber when a calf drinks a lot there's like this foam that comes out of their mouth and that was on that teat so I knew she was drinking from it which is really good so we're gonna I'm gonna go out there hopefully she doesn't 
cry all night long. She's gonna be in a pin right next to her, her mom. So it shouldn't be, and they can see each other. So hopefully it's not that big a deal, right? Also, I had talked to you about doing the pipe shelving in here and I got it done. I feel like this looks so much better. We did it here, we did it there. I did it here. And I got a, Trey got me a cream separator for Christmas, which I'm really excited for. And we'll have more raw milk videos once I'm getting, whoa, right lights, windows. We'll have more raw milk videos when I get more raw milk. We did it here, these aren't done. And then I think I'm gonna do another, I have it ordered, I just, they're not here yet. Another set, oh, I'm gonna do something else there. Figure that out, I need, I have a lot of cast iron pans. I know this. And I've also told you that I will not be parted with them. I love that. And Trey also got me a bunch of cast iron for Christmas. Bakeware though. So I got a cook, like a baking sheet, casserole dish. I bought this for myself. It's like their baking dish. And also, oh, a pie pan, which is over there. So I'm going cast iron people. I didn't even know until recently that the cast iron could be done in that matter. It is so windy. I don't even know if you're going to be able to hear me. But this is f something funny I want to share with you. <laughs> this is my inflatable hot tub. I feel like a bit of a hillbilly with it. But you know what? It's the best thing ever. My sister and I each got one on Black Friday. Oh my gosh, this is crazy out here. Gates are flying open. Crazy things are happening. But we got it on a Black Friday deal. And it's a six person hot tub, four to six people. And it was only, it was less than $300. So it's pretty awesome. My oldest son is over here in a chair, rocking a chicken. It's the same chicken I saw him carrying around all morning <laughs> i don't know what he's doing so i'm going to set up this makeshift pin here for suki put her in here tonight hopefully she stays it is a sloppy sloppy mess this was frozen and the kids were like ice skating all the way down we have an ice rink but yet because it's been 50 degrees this week everything's sloppy we still have a ton of snow you can tell it's like in places that aren't as well traveled lots of snow but everything and this is not a hay pile this is a giant snow pile that has hay stuck to it <laughs> but we have the pool out here in the middle the geese are loving it it's just a sloppy january mess just the beautiful scenery of the garden chickens got in here and uncovered my turnips so you can tell chicken ate those I have been kicking them out and throwing the turnips over to them and I'm also gonna give some to the cows This is kind of cool. January. And it's zone three. Oh, frozen. Whew. Well, we got her in. Did you die and go to hell? <laughs> and she's, oh my, mama pig's right here. And she's wild. She's a wild girl. Like she does not like to be touched from us at all just because our steer was very dangerous um, and came after me a few times that we didn't spend too much time with her when she was tiny, so it's our fault. But now, she's still little. She's only a couple months old, three months old. Now, we start, I tried to catch her unsuccessfully, about bipped it a few times. My children were all witnessing my humiliation. I put Mia's hay right beside Suki's hay so they can be by each other and I know Mia won't leave her side. But Lord willing, we'll find out tomorrow 
might be on the next video um, but we'll find out if we get some good milk Lord willing I'm just praying that she doesn't cry too loud even though her mom is right here but she can't eat from her so I'm praying all goes well this piglet escaped and this pin is so it's such a makeshift pin it's made up of, of the garden gate and a cattle panel so if this works and separation goes well I'm going to get a gate and tack it to the back of the barn and she'll have a little bit of a smaller pin but it'll be under we're not supposed to get any rain tonight so she'll be fine but for winter with the snow and the rain I'd like to get her a spot where she can be inside the barn <laughs> She hates me. I keep telling her. I say, do you know that I am going to be your favorite person one day? Like, I'm going to be your favorite person one day. She says, no. I'm Mia's favorite person. Cows have a person. I don't know if you know this or not, and I've heard another person talk about this, but cows definitely have their people. I am definitely Mia's person, and so, I hope the wind is not affecting the sound too much. There you go, guys. <laughs> what a couple days it's been. It's crazy. We're all, the kids are all doing much better, just have a lingering bits. We homeschool, so the kids don't go to school, but we do do a charter school, which is one day a week, and it never fails. It seems like both the times that they've been sick, it's been a couple days after we went to school for the day, and we get sick. And now my boys are about to go into the inflatable hot tub because we fancy. <laughs> He's got his swim trunks on. Oh, this is hysterical. <laughs> I don't know if you could see that, but he had his swim trunks on with his muck boots. Bogs. Mucks or bogs, one of the two. Classic. Getting <laughs> to go into the hot tub. You gotta be careful with that hot tub with wild boys because it's inflatable. It could definitely pop. All right, guys, well, I will catch you on my next video. Thanks very much for following along with this crazy tale. If you have any hot tips for dealing with cows with mastitis, drop them in the comments below or feel free to email me what we've been doing. Oh, I also had, we would massage the udder and put some special salve on it for mastitis. Like, we have bag bomb right now, but I'm going to buy some of that superior udder cream. It's more of an organic product, and I'm going to give that a whirl. So a good udder massage, frequent milkings, and prayer. I'm just like praying over the udder, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, Lord, heal the udder. That is not a joke. I, have, I believe in the power of prayer so much so that I often pray over my animals when they're... Uh oh got a crybaby starting. Look at Mia, she's like, hmm, got any snacks? That prayer, utter massage, bag bomb, and what else? Hmm, oh, frequent milkings. That seemed to be what cleared up this round of mastitis. Lord willing, it doesn't come back and we don't have to get an antibiotics, but we will if we have to. And also, oh, she's found her water dish. Catch you on my next video, guys. There'll be an update tomorrow morning on how this went. <laughs> Lord willing, it goes great. Oh, and praise report. My praise report for this week is, one, that the mastitis looks like it's cleared up. Two, um, even though it was a hard week of having our first sear processed, we are going to, at a time when there's all these crazy things around the, the traditional beef market or whatever, we're going to be bringing home our own clean, homegrown beef to supply a lot of my family members, not just our family, but a lot outside. So that's a praise report. Food on the table. All right, guys, see you next time. What are your praise reports? List them down in the comments below. Bye, guys.